Hi, this is M, and I'm going to do a quick little pressing. I've run in a few things from the garden. I'll press more of them after we do this video. But anyway, it's a few things that I've showcased in my garden vlog for April, which I'll put a link uh, in the description if you're interested in seeing that. And I decided to do the pressing portion separately from that vlog. Uh, that vlog at the end does show some of them uh, as to what they look like once they're pressed. But this one I'm just going to show you a few pressing techniques. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then please stay tuned and let's get started. And as always, this is a live video, so if you want to scrub the time along the timeline and hurry it up, uh, that's great. I will be talking about my thought process, so if you're interested in hearing what's going on in my head as I'm doing this, then, uh, then go ahead and watch in real time. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is this crab apple. I'm fishing for my... And I really, I've pressed it before, and if you watch the vlog video, you'll see what it looks like pressed. And what I wanted to show you is that I clipped off a piece of the stem. It's a tree. These kind of grow down a little bit, facing sort of like this. They grow to where they're kind of hanging down. And then along the stem are these little sections. There's a section here and a section here. And once you get into this, these are really woody. And, and I don't press the really woody part because it detracts from the flowers getting real flat. So what I'll do is I will take and st strip off the cluster. And then we'll set the cluster down. And as many of you heard me saying before, because this they're going to go in the book and the book's going to go this way. I'm basing them this way. So we'll go ahead and and take these off. Okay, so that's that's how those are going to go. And I'm not going to, like, I'm going to try to make this video not too long, so I'll, I'll do the rest off the camera, but I just wanted you to see see what I was doing and how I was doing it. Something else in the April Garden vlog that I talked about was the Pieris having these reddish tinges on their leaves. And the one that I did the other day that I show you in the vlog video that's already pressed wasn't quite as dark as these. These are even redder than the other day. So I just set these down. Like being similar to that. And because they, they're going to flatten this way. So I'll be facing them this way. This is the spine of the magazine book that I'm going to put them in. And then this is the outside. So that's how I'm going to do those. And then going on right now are these bleeding hearts. Aren't those absolutely gorgeous? And I just... Now this one's a little spent. So I'm not going to take my time and press that one. I'm going to peel it off the stem. And then I just fan them out. And then I press them like that. Actually, what I'll do is probably face them this way. So that when the book rolls over, it'll press them out. So I've got what I call um, the... I call these the domestic or garden variety bleeding hearts. And then the other one, where did I put it? Here's another bleeding heart. Probably press this one in uh, this configuration. That's probably how I'll press that one. And then these are the leaves. For the bleeding heart. This is the leaf, leaf for the fern leaf bleeding heart. Then I'll that kind of turn a very faint bluish hue after they're dry. They're really pretty. And then the domestic bleeding heart. I thought I brought one in, but here's a real small piece off of the domestic bleeding heart. 
their leaves are a little bit different. You can see how their leaves are a little bit, they're not as um, thin. They're, this is a small one, but it you can kind of get a little bit of an idea that there's different. Then this is Potentilla, which I'll face this way and press them like that. And then the Potentilla leaf, which I thought I brought in. Oh, here, here's, here's a leaf. They're very wispy, they're beautiful. See how beautiful that is? Okay. I'm not going to show you me putting them in book through all that. I've got a lot of pressing videos where I show that. I'm just showing, as I mentioned, I think already, I'm just showing you the highlights. This is, excuse me for bumping the camera, Basket of Gold Artemisia, which presses really well, holds the color really well. And I'll either press the small florets for detail work or the whole cluster. And I'll either press it like that, or sometimes I'll face it this way when I want to try to get more of the flowers to show, you know, to kind of fan them open a little bit. So play around with those. That's the basket gold. It's a perennial form of a, uh, the Alyssum family. I have one pansy. <laughs> That's all I have going on right now. So I brought that in. And that I just, that I just, I clip the back off here, right about there, and then I just lay it face down. And then here's some azaleas, light pink, and you can either press the cluster, well that one fell off, but if it didn't fall off, you could press a cluster, or you can press them individually. And with azalea, some of them press good. You'll see, and if you look at the April vlog video at the end, I'll sh I showed you some azaleas, and you'll see where the, the pink ones kind of real fade out, but they're still pretty. Whereas I had a, some blue azale uh, azaleas that really hold their color well. So you just want to give it a try and see. Here's a more of a purplish red. And they, they press pretty. There's some more of that pink. Here's some purplish when they're in bud form. Oh, something else. Now, this is fading quick, so I'll probably have to go press some more fresh ones for pressing. This is that silver artemisia. See where the back is more, more silver than the front? And I will face them this way in the book so that when it, the book rolls over it, it forces them open up to open up like that. So here's some more Artemisia. And then here's some red azaleas, which they press and hold their color okay. And then what else do we have here? Oh, the uh, the forget-me-nots. Now those I'll press this way so that the book oh, kind of opens them up where you can see the flower better. And then for individual forget-me-nots, and I think I showed this in another video, what I do is I to go from the back and get up under there, although I don't have nails, my fingers are horrible, and I tease the florette off. And that's how I get the that's how I get the individual florets. And I usually lay them face down. So I I just gently tease. I'll sometimes they'll break. That one broke. Let's try a different one. I kind of squeeze the green part back here while I'm teasing it, and it works better with the ones that are lower down on the on the stem. Because as you get up on the stem, they, uh, they're they harder to come off. And then you can take what's rest the rest off after you do that, and you can 
press the piece. I also brought in, this is lemon balm. These leaves here are lemon balm. Here's, here's the tip of a lemon balm. And I'll just press them like this. Another leaf that's really interesting, holds their color for years and years, and I don't know what this is called. I saw one, saw this at plant at one of our nurseries last year, and I and I was going to write down what it was because I forget, and I I just don't know. I will cut the stem off because they're pretty sheer, so I don't want the stem to infringe upon the petal. And then I'll just press it. These are really easy to press, and they're beautiful, and it holds this nice. Uh, variegated color. And here's some different sizes of the leaves. And then here's a little cluster of some small ones where I'll just do the whole cluster. And when you look at them in the, the garden, they kind of hang down like that. So when you walk by, you're looking at them hanging down. So I will tend to do something like that. And what else have we? Oh, I brought in some of these fiddle ferns. They're starting to open, but I thought I'd give these a try. They're 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 fiddling out now. So if you're interested in something like that, now's the time. It depends upon where you live. If you live in a harsh winter area, they might not be go uh, doing this yet. They might still be dormant. But they're fleeting. They'll they'll be they, they'll be like this, and then they'll be open, and it'll be too late. Anything else? Oh, I brought in some rose leaves. Uh, I might have said in another video that I I do roses try to do roses earlier because otherwise they get blemished in my area very very quickly. And then. The, this, I think I actually showed this in another video, but I love these leaves. It's a, it's from the Cranesbill family. It's a miniature Cranesbill, and I actually have some that have a couple flowers now, so I could show you how small the flowers are. They are slightly evasive in the sense that they will reseed. But look at how small the flowers are. But you can see, see how it kind of reminds you of a, like a mini, a super mini Cranesbill. And it's got the same kind of pod on there that this flower is already spent. I don't know how well you can see that. But I just wanted to see how small the flowers are. These leaves are really, really nice. And then the last thing I brought in was some oregano leaf. And the reason I brought them in now is because they're not blemished and they press really good, hold their color for a long time. I will press the florets when they come out, but that'll be later in the summer. And so these these are really good for greenery. And this is an herb. I use it in uh, use it in my herbal teas. Sometimes I'll put the leaves in. Okay, I think I highlighted most of the things that I'm going to be pressing today. So if you have anything going on in your area, take a look, see what you have, and. Uh, have a great day. Thank you for tuning in.